He was the architect of the Holocaust. He ruthlessly killed those in his way as he rose to a position of power second to only Hitler himself. Today we get into the life of Heinrich Himmler, one of the most calculated and cold leaders in history. Heinrich Leopold Himmler was born in Munich, Germany on October 7th. Born into a middle class conservative Catholic family, both of his parents were a large influence on him. He started training in the German military at the age of 15 to serve in World War I. He did not get a chance to fight in the war, although he did earn the Iron Cross. During his time in the military, he became a lieutenant and later enrolled at the Technikais Hollestur, which has been renamed to the University of Munich. He went there to study agronomy, which is a study of farming for industrial products. Although after the unification of Germany in 1891, anti-Semitic policies in Germany were eliminated and anti-Semitism thrived in Germany and other parts of Western Europe, although Himmler was already relatively anti-Semitic, he still remained friends with many Jewish people in his university. Later on, he remained polite to Jewish people despite his growing anti-Semitic beliefs. During his second year of university, he attempted to go back into military service again, yet failed, although he was able to extend his influence in the paramilitary scene in Munich, where he met Ernst Röhm, a co-founder of the SS and early Nazi Party member. Himmler became more interested in Nazi Party beliefs, as shown in his diary, which was dominated by Nazi propaganda pamphlets and myths. After the assassinations of Foreign Minister Walther Rathno on the 24th of June, Himmler's political views shifted to the radical right. After this, his parents could no longer afford to finance his college education, so he became a low-salary office worker. He quit his position in the office to pursue a career in the Nazi party in August 1923. As a member of Rome's paramilitary unit, Himmler was involved in the Beer Hall Push, an unsuccessful attempt by Hitler to seize control of Munich. To consolidate and advance his own position in the Nazi party, Himmler took advantage of the disarray in the party following Hitler's arrest in the wake of the Beer Hall Push. From mid-1924, he worked under Gregor Strasser as a party secretary and propaganda assistant. Traveling all over Bavaria, agitating for the party, he gave speeches and distributed literature. Placed in charge of the party's office in Lower Bavaria by Strasser from late 1924, he was responsible for integrating the area's membership with the Nazi party under Hitler when he was released from jail and the party was refounded in February of 1925. That same year, he joined the Schustafel, otherwise known as the SS, as a leader. His first leadership position in the SS was that of SS Gal district leader in Lower Bavaria from 1926. Upon the resignation of SS Commander Erhard Haydn in Germany in 1929, Himmler assumed the position of Reichsführer SS with Hitler's approval. One of his first responsibilities was to organize SS participants at the Nuremberg rally that September. Over the next year, Himmler grew the SS from a force of about 290 to about 3,000. By 1930, Himmler had persuaded Hitler to run the SS as a separate organization from the Nazi paramilitary. Under Himmler's leadership, the SS developed its own military branch. Branch, the SS Vergungestruppe, which later developed into the Waffen SS. Under the authority of Himmler, the Waffen SS developed a fully militarized structure of command and operations. It grew from three regiments to over 38 divisions during World War II, serving alongside the army but never formally being part of it. When Hitler and his army chiefs asked for a pretext of the invasion of Poland in 1939, Himmler, Heydrich, and Heinrich Müller masterminded and carried out a false flag project, codenamed Operation Himmler. This operation faked Polish border aggression, ultimately giving Germany a reason to invade Poland. By early 1941, following Himmler's orders, 10 concentration camps have been constructed in which inmates were subjected to forced labor. Jews from all over Germany and the occupied territories were deported to the camps or confined to ghettos, as Germans were pushed back from Moscow in December 1941, signaling that the expected quick defeat of the Soviet Union had failed to materialize, Hitler and other Nazi officials realized that the mass deportations to the East would no longer be possible. As a result, instead of deportation, many Jews in Europe were destined to death. In early 1945, Hitler had spiraled into depression and bad health. Himmler started negotiations to surrender Germany to the favorable Western powers behind Hitler's back, with Count Falk Bernadotte head of the Swedish Red Cross. With the surrender agreement rejected by his comrades in the party and being actively hunted by the Allies, Himmler attempted to go into hiding and was captured by a Soviet former POW who had recognized him. He was turned over to a British POW camp on May 23rd. After being examined by a doctor, he had been asked to open his mouth and bit into a hidden cyanide capsule, leading to his death. As you can see, Heinrich Himmler was one of the most evil leaders in history. He slowly rose through the ranks of the Nazi party, introducing anti-Semitic policies and ordering the construction of death camps and forced labor camps, such as Auschwitz, Dachau, and more. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, you can subscribe and see more videos like this on our new channel. Thanks for watching.